welcome to another episode of What's Brewing and welcome to the brand new brew shed. So I've put a lot of work in and I'm finally ready to get started on a brew. Um, so come along and join me today as I brew up a Vienna Lager. Today's brew is actually a pseudo lager because I'll be using a Kvike yeast strain instead of a lager yeast. I'll be following along with the Maltmiller's Vienna Lager recipe and that is the first in their brew with this series. The link will be in the description below if you want to check it out. The objective of the Malt Miller's recipe was to brew something that was crisp and something that brewed quick and it uses the Lutra strain from Omega Labs which is actually one of their first dry yeast strains as well. So that's the plan for today, a nice easy one hopefully um, and it's going to be the first time that I'm brewing with you guys on camera on the B80 from Brew Tools. So I'm going to go ahead and get that loaded up with the mash water and get it up to strike temperature. So I'll see you in a minute. Today I'll also be trying for the first time the update to the brew tools which allows you to send a recipe from Brewfather. Once you've got the code you can go ahead to the brew tools and input this code here and it should import the recipe from the phone directly to the brew tools. I've just imported the recipe into Brew Tools from the Brewfather app on my phone and it looks like everything's gone across correctly so I'm now going to start adding the mash water. So that's 23.2 litres of Tesco Ashbeck water that I've added in there just because it's got a better mineral profile than what my home tap water's got. I'm going to get that heated up now. The mash water is nearly heated so I just need to add some calcium chloride flakes and some gypsum to the water to get the water profile just where I want it to be. I've got a 4.9 edition of calcium chloride and a small 2.9 edition of gypsum. In go the minor water additions. That should help get the mash pH where I want it to be. Mash water is now at strike temperature, so I'm going to start adding the grains. I've got a split malt bill of Simpsons Vienna malt, and also Simpsons Finest Lager malt, so I'm going to add these now. All the grains are in now, uh, quite a simple malt bill really, but it's got that Vienna malt and the Lager malt in there, both Simpsons, both English malts. The mash profile is a two-step mash, we've got a 66 degree mash for 50 minutes and then a mash out at 75 for 10 minutes. The mash is just finished, so the next step is to raise the grain basket and sparge. I've actually heated up 15 litres of sparge water on an old grain father I've got here to 68 degrees and the plan is to hoist the grain basket out using the chain hoist that I've got here. So whilst the grain bill isn't too hefty for this I've actually done a 23 litre batch in the 80 litre B80 Pro. I want to give the chain hoist a test run for some larger batches. So I'm going to see how it goes with this smaller batch and worst case scenario I should be able to lift it up with my arms. I've got the chain hoist in position. The heating elements are off which is critical at this stage of the sparge uh, with B80. You don't want, especially in a, a small batch like this, you don't want those heating elements exposed. So now I'm going to give the chain hoist a go and see how we go. So the sparge went well, just heating everything up now to boil temperatures, coming up quickly to 100 degrees. Got 6 kilowatt heating elements in the B80, so we're going up to 100 pretty quick. We're on 80 at the minute, so we should be there in no time. I've got one hop addition of 
24 grams of SARS Lupamax hyper concentrated pellets. So I chuck those straight in at 60 minutes and then we get boiling. Boil temperatures reach, so in goes the SARS, 24 grams. And on goes the steam hat. So hopefully, this is the first time brewing with this system, so we'll see how it goes, but in theory the steam hat should collect all the steam that's coming out. The steam should flow out the duct in, otherwise it's going to get very steamy in here. But now that that's on, 60 minutes, and then we'll be ready to start cooling. There's 10 minutes left on the boil, so I've just got some yeast nutrient and Irish moss to add. I'm going to chuck that in now through the steam cap hatch. The boil's finished now, and I've got a 21 gram addition of some more SARS that I'm going to leave at 80 degree 10 minute hot stands, so I'm going to put that in now. after 10 minutes I'm going to then begin cooling down and start transferring. Okay everything's cooled down now we're ready to get into the fermenter so I'm going to start transferring across now. So the last thing to do today is to add this, the Omega Labs Lutra yeast, dried. I'm gonna pop this in now, the vessel's at temperature, so then I can leave that and let the fight get to work. Hello, welcome back. It has been just over a week now and I am ready to start transferring the beer to the keg, ready for lagering. I just wanted to talk quickly about the fermentation profile for this lager. The lager finished actually pretty quickly reaching terminal gravity of 1.009 in just two days, uh, which is what you'd expect from a Kvark yeast. The initial two days I fermented at 22 degrees Celsius. I fermented at 22 degrees to make sure that there were minimal flavours from the yeast coming through into the final product. With a lager you kind of expect that clean profile from the yeast. so. Fermenting at the bottom of the temperature range for this particular yeast strain meant that I'd get minimal impact from the yeast in the final flavour. After the initial two days at 22, I moved up to 25 just to give it a last little boost before cold crashing down to 3 or 4 degrees Celsius ahead of transferring to the keg for lagering. So just before I start transferring, I thought I'd quickly walk through my process for transferring from the Chronicle to the keg. I actually, instead of putting a blow-off tube or anything on the fermenter, I fill the keg up with star sand and connect the output to the keg so that all the CO2 that the yeast produces pushes the star sand out of the keg and fills the keg completely with CO2 without having to burn through any of your own CO2 supply. Once it comes to the cold crash, I unhook the keg and put slight pressure into the Chronicle. The SS Brutec Chronicle range isn't actually rated for pressure, but if you do have the domed hat, you can get around 2-3 to three PSI quite comfortably. The benefit of adding some pressure to the fermenter as it cold crashes, it means you avoid any issues with potential implosions. These vessels can usually handle a bit of outward pressure, but inward pressure can cause buckling and other issues like that. Once I'm ready to transfer into the keg, I've got a ball lock liquid post connector here. I've filled this with liquid star sand solution to avoid any oxygen in the line. I'm going to connect this to the keg and with a little bit of pressure, force the beer out into the keg. And that's my process for minimal oxygen when you're transferring from the fermenter to the keg. So now I'll get started on that. Before transferring across, I'll pull off a quick sample to show you guys what it's currently looking like at the minute. It's not crystal clear just yet, as you'd expect, it's only been a week. But it is looking really clear and it's tasting really clean and nice actually. I have pulled off a sample or two already and the taste is really clean, it's really great. There's a really sweet maltiness to it and I think it's going to be tasting absolutely excellent once it's fully carbonated. So I'm going to pour off a sample now and let you guys know how it's looking and more importantly, how it's tasting. 
So as you can see, it's starting to clear up quite nicely. Smell-wise, there, there is a hint of DMS to it, but it's nothing too overpowering or off-putting. Taste-wise, it's a really crisp and refreshing lager. Uh, it's got a lovely sweet malty finish to it. And I think once that's carved out, it's going to be a really great lager. So I'm going to go ahead now and start transferring to the keg. First step is to connect to this connect here that will allow me to purge this line of the star sand solution and also any yeast sediment that might have collected in the racking arm here. So I'll open up the racking arm and then I'll connect and dispense this just somewhere else. So now I'm happy with what's in the dispense line so I'm going to connect to the keg and start transferring. Once connected I need to release the pressure valve on here and then that creates the gradient of pressure that will allow the beer to transfer through the lines and into the keg. So that's me done for today, everything's transferred across now, I'm just going to leave it to carve up and lager for a bit longer and clear up, and then I'll come back to you guys with the final part of this video, which is going to be the final taste. So I'll see you then. So, it has been three weeks now and the lager is finally ready to drink. The lager itself was done really quick, two days. Um, and the fermentation was complete. I left it for a few more days just to condition a little bit in the fermenter uh, for less than a week in total, uh, at which point it was perfectly drinkable, but I have been conditioning now in the keg in the freezer for three weeks, and I think I'm finally at the point now where I'm ready to taste test with you guys, let you know what I think. So that is an absolute crispy boy. <laughs> There's some real sweet malt coming through that, your typical bread and biscuit that you might expect. There's hardly any hop character coming through actually, maybe just a hint of bitterness, exactly what you want in a lager just to balance out that sweetness. It's the first time that I've used Lupin Max hop, so I was expecting a little bit more to come through because they are quite concentrated, but actually that balances really well. On the nose you've got that classic creamed corn coming through, a hint of sulphur but nothing too distracting. Overall that is a really great tasting, refreshing beer, really easy to do, tastes great. I hope you guys can follow along with that, have a go. The kits are on the Malt Miller website, you can purchase those now. Let me know if you've enjoyed this brew with this video, following along with the Malt Miller's recipe, the videos are linked to in the description. The plan is to brew along with their next one which has just been released which is a Soundwave IPA and that looks like that will be another great beer so I'll be looking forward to trying that one and getting started on the next brew. If you've enjoyed this video feel free to give it a like and comment, let me know if you've got any questions, I'll have a go at answering them and really recommend having a go at this one yourself because it is an absolutely great beer. So cheers!